not going to be involved in public ministry as a priest any longer. So for now, God bless you, God love you, and goodbye. John Carafi, once called father, now simply the black sheepdog. No doubt you've been following the sad and perplexing case of Father John Carapi. In March of this year, the power preacher who regularly appeared on this network was placed on administrative leave by his order in the wake of allegations of misconduct by one of his former employees. An investigation was undertaken by his religious community, SALT, the Society of Our Lady of the Most Holy Trinity. And just last week, he announced, as you heard on his website, that he's leaving priestly ministry. For so many of us who knew Father Karapi, this is both a shock and a puzzlement. Let me say up front that none of us can speak to the veracity of the accusations against Father Karapi since we just don't have the information or all of it. With, this, with his decision to leave priestly ministry, however, Father Karapi has effectively ended the internal investigation, so we may never know whether he's innocent or guilty of these charges. With so much chatter on the Internet, both pro and con, we thought it important to bring you a reporter who's been covering the story since it broke. She's one of the few people not offering opinion, but fresh reportage. She serves as senior editor of the National Catholic Register, recently acquired by EWTN. Please welcome to the program, Joan Frawley Desmond. Joan, thanks for staying oh, for our after show. You're welcome. Let's get into uh, the, we talked about this a little in the broadcast. I want to refresh people's memory. Father Karapi had been asked to return to the community. He'd been living in Montana, and you spoke to the head of SALT, uh, Father Jerry Sheehan, and he told you what? Father Sheehan told me that they really wanted Father Karapi to come back into the community. He felt that that would be the right thing for Father Karapi and the right thing for the community. It was really something the community wanted, and he also thought Father Karapi would benefit from it. Mm -hmm. um, now, I've really heard two things. I mean, as I said earlier, this, is, this story is breaking. We're still getting new information, and a lot of things could happen in the next period. We, we really don't know. One thing, uh, two things I have come to know in the last week or so since um, the announcement. When I first spoke with Father Sheehan, he told me that one issue which had come up was this collision um, over the investigation, that there was a civil suit that had been filed um, previous uh, to Father's more recent decision, um, filed against um, the person who had uh, leveled this allegation against Father. Um, so that civil suit was there. That had started. Right. Okay, then we have the canonical investigation, which was initiated by the order. So that's starting. Well, apparently an issue is, under ca canon law, you cannot have any pressure brought to bear on witnesses so they can fully and freely express mm -hmm. all the facts and opinions that they have, you know, right. as a proper witness. Okay. So Father Sheehan initially told me last week that this was a problem. So there was a collision. It meant for Father Karapi, according to Father Sheehan, he said that Father Karapi felt his civil rights could not be properly exercised because mm -hmm. then the witnesses that were involved in the civil suit would then be talking to the canonical investigator. Mm -hmm. Anyway, it's complicated. Yeah. But the result is that that was a problem. Well, the, witnesses Karapi, signed, the, the, the witnesses and the accusers apparently signed non-disclosure agreements when working for Father Karapi's media company. Sorry, I should have right. clarified that point. So that created a problem. They were worried mm -hmm. that they had violated or would violate this non-disclosure agreement. And in fact, the primary witness, who was, going to, who was also the same person who is now being sued, um, she had, according to Father Karapi, violated this non-disclosure agreement. That was the whole nature of the civil suit. Mm -hmm. So you have that problem, and then you have additional witnesses who had also signed a non-disclosure agreement. So you have that going on. How do the canonical investigators proceed? So mm -hmm. that created um, a bit of a problem. And then finally, Father Karapi, according to his canon lawyers and civil lawyers, felt his civil rights could not be properly exercised. So basically, Again, he doesn't specify in the Let statement. Let me read the quote. There's a yeah. quote where he says uh, on his website again, my canonical and civil lawyers have concluded that I cannot receive a fair and just hearing under the church's present process. Now, if this, is, if this is Father Brown, an unknown priest from the hinterlands, I might buy this. And on this show, I've said repeatedly 
there are a number of priests, and I, I could give you a list of them, who have been unjustly accused of things, and the process drags on, and sometimes they're never clear. They just sit right. there in limbo. But when you have a public, high public profile priest like Father Karapi, why wouldn't he stay and fight, particularly if he's innocent of the charges? I think that's the question many of his supporters have, and I think they're confused. They're wondering, mm -hmm. they're confused, and honestly, when you look at it, there's not a lot of facts about it to hold on to. I think, you know, we, we're in a litigious environment. Yep. We're in an environment where also proper respect for privacy and these issues are important. So mm -hmm. you have those two playing a role here. I think it's very difficult to get to the bottom yeah. of all of this. From You know, you can ask one person, you can ask another person, right. and it's hard to get all the information. Yeah, but the bottom line is he's leaving priestly ministry, yes. which I know is upsetting to a lot of people. Yes. Um, let's talk about the moniker that he's uh, set up for himself. Some people have described it even in emails here. Uh, you know, they say, what, 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 is, what is this superhero alter ego that uh, Father Karapi seems to have assumed for himself, the black sheepdog? What are your thoughts on this? Well, I've mostly been looking on the sites to mm -hmm. see what people think. Looking at emails, I went on his, um, his site, mm -hmm. The Black Sheepdog, to see what people said. Now, I'm sure there's a whole spectrum of responses, right. but I was just curious what people thought. And it seems like, number one, Black Sheepdog aside, people are concerned about him leaving the priesthood mm -hmm. or appearing to leave the priesthood. And Father Jerry Sheehan does make the point. He has asked Father to reconfirm this decision. I think he still has some doubts. And on Father's site today, I believe it was, there was a post saying, well, once a priest, always a priest. So it seems like there is, a, I'm not exactly what, but I would say it's a little hard to get your hands wrapped around what's happening. It's a moving target this here story, with this. Yeah. But anyway, so people are saying first, Father, please stay in the priesthood, you know. And then I saw a really touching. Um, a touching post. I think it was. It ended up on YouTube, but it, it appeared on uh, one of the Deacon sites. Mm -hmm. And these were from three people who had worked with him. It was produced by St. Joseph Communication. Mm -hmm. And one was a former bodyguard who um, had been touched by Father and very deeply moved spiritually. And then two were people at St. Joseph's Communications. Well, you know, they all said, Father, we want you to stay. And you know, you're talking about the spiritual battleground, stay and fight. Don't, mm -hmm. don't walk away from this, however painful it may be. So people, what I'm getting the message of, as far as their understanding of the black sheepdog, I'm getting more, I'm getting negative feedback on the black sheepdog to some degree. Yeah, no, my email is also there. Yeah. People don't know, they, they, some, some people, a good number of, of our respondents say it looks demonic and you see those eyes, we had them up earlier. Yeah. I mean, that's their first takeaway. I, I, I mean, it's not a warm, fuzzy image. That's it's not true. a warm, fuzzy image. I mean, you feel like a black sheep, um, a black sheep dog. It's like, are they, where is that black sheep dog taking people? Uh -huh. You know, where is that, where is that going? But that's just a, you know, that's a question. I don't know the answer. But I think mostly people are concerned about him returning to the fight, staying and being a priest, and continuing his very important mm -hmm. work in some capacity. I mean, it's hard to know right yeah. now. I do want to mention, Raymond, there was a second thing. The first was the collision over the canonical and civil mm -hmm. issue. There was a second thing that Father Jerry then brought up in the formal statement that SALT issued. There they said, Father they expressed concern about his, you know, like his mental, emotional, spiritual state. They said he was under distress and that he had written a letter saying he was under distress. So that was part two. We wrote mm -hmm. the first story online. We just wrapped up our print edition and that second statement will be in the print edition and that will get priority as the public statement. Mm -hmm. But basically saying there seems to be, and, and, and Raymond, who in, in public life, the role that he has is not under pressure. Well, all of us in public life, you're going to be attacked, you're going to have accusations made against you. I mean, I've had them, other people have had them. But in my case, in the case of friends of mine, you stand your ground, you clear your name, and you go through the process. Is it ugly? Yes, it's part of being in the public eye. Uh, is it uncomfortable? Yes. Do people say horrible things? Welcome to the club. So uh, there's a part of me that feels uh, that, that, that's part of the game, and I think Father knows that. He's certainly, you know, he, he's, he's smart enough to realize that that's part of, of the slings and arrows of public life. So we'll see how this turns out, and what his next move is, which will be interesting. Um, you know, we don't plan on becoming the, you know, uh, Father John Karapi news service here, but, uh, but it'll be interesting to see what happens in the coming days. Joan, 
for Thank all he does, man. Thank you for being here and for all your great work. You can read Joan's columns at ncregister.com. And thanks for staying on our World Over After Show. I'm Raymond Arroyo. We'll see you next time. Bye now.